During the last 10 years, the FANGs represented the most crowded investment thesis of not only Wall Street, but equity portfolios from all over the world. One of the second A's belongs to the e-commerce giant Amazon, the largest retailer by revenue and owned by the billionaire philanthropist Jeff Bezos. Possibly, all of you watching this video are Amazon's customers or you have been in the past, and you're familiar with the vast variety of products they have on offer online. If you aren't that familiar with Amazon as a company, let me tell you that since it started operating its retail business, it has only been able to generate profits in a reduced number of quarters. Indeed, it started losing money again after the pandemic boom, when inflation and the removal of pandemic support measures like stimulus checks or frozen rent payments reduced spending power from customers and half growing sales, while operating costs kept rising. Amazon's core business has been its web services division, which, as Jeff Bezos explains, benefited from absent competition during the initial years of the web services industry. Today, a German startup founded back in 2008 is picking a fight with Amazon in the online fashion market. And believe it or not, it's winning. Today, I want to introduce you to Salando. But before moving any further, you should be aware I own the stock. I am a happy shareholder and although I haven't received any compensation for this video nor I have any personal affiliation to the company, it's still in my best interest that the company does well in the long term. So going down to business. Born from the heart of Berlin, Zalando is a strange case of a successful German startup which probably couldn't market itself good enough among European investment bankers, as the company has not earned the attention other German startups own like the infamous Wirecard or SAP which has become Germany's last hope to prove Wall Street that not only Silicon Valley is capable of changing the world and Germans are capable of much more than only building luxury cars. Indeed, Zalando is one of two companies part of the DAX index which joined the Frankfurt Stock Exchange only in the last 100 years. Zalando's business model is pretty similar to Amazon's. While today the American juggernaut engages in a wide array of businesses like web services, streaming, supermarkets and how not e-commerce, both Zalando and Amazon started with the same business plan, become the leaders at selling one specific item, and achieve that target fast. In the case of Amazon, it was books. Zalando opted for becoming the e-commerce premier of shoes. Although both succeeded, they took very different paths which they continue to uphold today. It's important to differentiate Amazon when public during the dot-com bubble and experienced an important appreciation in stock value, which fluctuated violently to levels hard to justify as a fair value of its underlying business. The reason investors pushed the stock so hard was growth. Just as with the Facebooks, Googles or Apples, companies which reached at least 1 trillion in market cap value. Zalando, on the other hand, became public much later in the European market. Looking at the most popular stocks in Europe, it's fair to judge European investors as more inclined towards profitability, established and conservative business models. This is key in understanding Zalando's strategy, why it diverts from Amazon's and why Zalando is betting on the right direction. 20 years back, the future of the internet and how it would reshape the global economy were equally exciting and uncertain. The era of the dot-com bubble indeed can be considered as a very rational market if you trace back to the investing rational at the time. People thought eventually internet companies like Yahoo would charge the same for an email than for a post letter. Therefore, investors applying discounted cash flow models assumed Yahoo could become the most profitable mail company on earth. Investors also believed customers would pay an annual fee for products we use every day like Google Search Engine, Microsoft Office, and many more. Today, we're all used to receive many of these services for free, and in exchange we let big tech companies collect our data in exchange. When the air inside the dot-com bubble blew out, many of these internet unicorns had seen 99% of all of its equity wiped out. Amazon fell 97% from its all-time high, but that didn't prevent Jeff Bezos from striking gold with its aggressive expansionary strategy. Wall Street didn't get crazy about Amazon because it sold books. It became one of its most beloved tech stories because of its infinite growth strategy. 
Amazon has followed since the beginning an aggressive strategy of engaging in new businesses and industries, as well as violently taking over its competence and stealing market share. In 2006, Amazon became the first company offering web services on its platform, the first widely adopted cloud service platform. Through AWS, companies could start renting software, finding storage solutions for the data, developers could access machine learning tools, and the best of all, you only had to pay for what you used, making it extremely accessible and cheap for entrepreneurs with short-term needs or budget constraints. Today, almost all of Amazon's free cash flow, the hard money earned from running operations, comes from its web services division. In 2021, Amazon made $24.8 billion in total operating profits, 74% of it coming from the Amazon cloud. That hasn't been Amazon's only cash machine. Advertising has also become one of the strongest sources of profits, turning the American giant into the third largest advertiser in the US only after Google and Facebook. If you've managed to stick engaged with the video up till now, it's time to address what Amazon is missing and why I believe Zalando can become a massive e-commerce giant in the next decade. We're currently entering our third decade after humans started navigating the internet. The period of stellar growth and unlimited opportunity appears to be now in the past. No company is posting the type of growth resembling the start of the dot-com era. Clearly, there is innovation taking place and things are changing. But this is precisely where Amazon doesn't seem to be favored. Today, the internet is embedded into our lives with such a level of integration, accessibility, and trust. It is able to provide increasingly more tailored solutions at a smaller scale. Explain with numbers. In the early 2000s, only around 7% of the world was active on the internet. Today, that number has increased to 60% and growing. A very good example comes from the disruption in transportation which Uber started. While it is believed by many investors Uber may become someday the undisputed leader in transportation, considering the success of an increasing number of local competitors in every region of the world and in the US itself, it makes the success story of Uber more unlikely to materialize, especially thanks to the internet's inability to change all types of regulations. Some, like in transportation, are too strong to be withdrawn even if groundbreaking technology breaks into our lives. It's very hard to accurately measure the number of online businesses today, but it's estimated to be around 20 million, up from a couple of thousands during the mid-90s. Time spent on the internet by users has reached an average of slightly more than 3 hours per day, doubling in the last decade, and e-commerce sales today represent 15% of all retail sales, as measured by the Federal Reserve Data Analytics Division, up from only 0.7% at the start of the year 2000. All long-term trends point out towards an increased use of websites and mobile apps to shop and even pay for our purchases. Even for Amazon, there is still room to grow. Nevertheless, that room is considerably smaller than it was before. Amazon has increasingly been trying to become the most efficient company in the use of resources, investing billions of dollars in drones, AI, business analytics, hiring the best experts with very competitive wages, incorporating robotics in their logistics management, and even fighting back towards its workers to keep tight deadlines and working conditions to ensure compliance with its attractive delivery policies. In reality, it's really hard to understand how much profit Amazon makes exclusively from its online stores, as they generally break down their financial statements in three different segments, embedded with other revenue streams like third-party advertising fees, streaming, and physical stores. Those segments are North America, International, and AWS. Even with all segments taken into account, Amazon still loses money internationally, and the operating income margin in the US is extremely narrow, taking into account not only retail is included inside that category. It's Amazon Web Services with only 18% of revenue, which account for 85% of operating profit, and subsidizes the other unprofitable branches. Talando instead, was profitable after its fourth year of operations. The strategy was simple, effective, and much more straightforward. Far from continuous growth strategies engaging in different unrelated businesses, Falando grabbed a niche market, in this case, Europe's fashion industry, worth around 450 billion euros. 
and push to become the leading player engaging over and over with the same customer over the same products. Uh, are you profitable right now or only in certain regions? No, we are, we are profitable. So, um, so last year we, um, we, um, uh, we actually had, had profits of 80 million, roughly 80 million. So we, um, you know, we believe in a, in a profitable growth path. There's lots of room of, you know, of growing, but we, um, but we think, you know, it's, it's from a company from our sides, it's a better way to do it on a profitable growth path by now. So. Europe is the global fashion center, where clothing is more than a need, but a cultural status brand in all of the countries inside the continent. It's a remarkably stable market, offering high margins and very small barriers of entry. Today it's really easy to contact textile producers in China, Bangladesh, Turkey, Portugal or Indonesia, design and sell your new brand of shirts, shoes, jackets or hats. Possibly comparing Zalando and Amazon isn't picking a fair fight, as a German unicorn isn't a conglomerate like the American juggernaut is. Comparing Zalando to the UK-based ASOS could be a more balanced judgement, but given how bad the British e-commerce fashion brand is doing, why Zalando keeps growing? we could consider it a lost fight for its UK peer. Shane also managed to break through the European market recently with big strength. But what differentiates Zalando from Shane or Inditex or any other e-commerce brand is that literally every clothing brand can be found in Zalando, while also offering low-cost items from their own brands and advertising features for small designers, helping them become more visible and attract customers inside the continent copying Amazon's third-party feed business. That's something no other company has managed to achieve in the fashion market, and what makes Zalando so reliable. Not only delivers and products are top-notch, but they also come with a guarantee of authenticity, something which has inflicted lots of harm to Amazon as customers increasingly expect the best quality and faster. While Amazon has a too-good-to-be-true customer service, refunding for almost no reason to customers, they also allow a free flow of fake products in all categories inside the platform, while Zalando only works with official distributors and checks the quality of all their products sold. Amazon's lack of control of product quality and supervision of return packages has led to several cases of fraud with customers not returning the product and making a dime with refunds, proving Amazon has a long way to go in improving their product supply chain. A fair question in this respect would be, if achieving a perfect level of efficiency in the supply chain is possible with the most relaxed and customer-friendly policy on the market, because you just can't prevent fraud when you place your customer on the right side of the trade every single time. Nonetheless, Zalando is winning against Amazon in an increasingly important field, profitability. A key decision to stick to the European market, develop a trustworthy and long-lasting relationship with its logistics center providers, transportation services, and most importantly, its customers, has helped the company to carry on growing with profitability even after the pandemic boom, which I believe is giving investors a great opportunity to buy in at the deep value price at this exact moment with the stock down nearly 70%, while revenues and new users keep growing and fashion designers increase advertisements on the platform. In 2017, the European fashion market accounted for 400 billion euros in annual revenue, and Zalando, with its 2 billion euros in gross sales, accounted for 0.5% of that market. In its 2021 annual report, Zalando managed to surpass the 10 billion euro mark in sales, achieving a 2.5% market share. That's a 250% increase in market share in 4 years, and a 400% increase in revenue. The share count has remained stable, protecting shareholder value of their public equity and avoiding dilution to raise cash. The company is also not too leveraged, with a debt-to-equity ratio of 0.43 on a current ratio of 1.45, proving it's this able to pay down its liabilities without too much of a headache. With such numbers, favorable long-term trends and an established presence, Zalando is well positioned to continue grinding market share of Europe's 400 billion euros fashion market. Competition has either disappeared or failed to dethrone Zalando's leadership. I believe the world is entering a new cycle. As the famous Spanish philosopher Antonio Escotado once said, humans have never been more free than since they have the internet, because today you have a university inside your phone. The level of accessibility to the internet, 
the amount of professionals online and the need for increasingly tailored solutions is going to bring more and more smaller startups which will challenge big tech's leadership in markets requiring of more sophisticated solutions. And while it isn't clear what the end will be in sectors like transportation or advertisement, at least we know the name of that tiny unicorn climbing closer and closer to the top of the fashion industry. That's all for today, let me know in the comments any topic you would like to hear from in the next videos and Happy New Year!